and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple, coming to us straight from the madmen over at Elder Brain, previously responsible for inflicting Crown of the Oathbreaker and Torrents of the Spell Hoarder on t onto the universe, and now, de and now delving headfirst into their first card, their first card game um, project with Spell Wars, which as an aside is a ridiculously har hard thing to Google images for. <laughs> the one and only spell control to Major Tom. <laughs> Couldn't resist. Hey, I had to. <laughs> I had to get a Major Tom <laughs> joke out of there somewhere. Sure. Crowd control. Yeah. Uh, great to be here, Mildred, as always. So... Spell Wars, as I understand it, is a is a self-contained um, card game about du about dueling mages. Now, let me get the obvious question out of the way: Did you play a lot of stuff like Magic: The Gathering in your formative years? I did, yes, uh, of course. Um, back in the day, I, I I still have my Magic collection. Um, actually, been looking at it a lot. These last couple of months, um, but this was in like late '90s, so all my cards are super old. Um, but yeah, I mean, it magic was obviously a, a, a huge part of my life uh, mm -hmm. back then. Um, Spell Wars, of course, it, it's not a, a collectible, so it's not not a, a, a collecting game, you know, call, uh, like like Magic. So it's mm -hmm. it's a a standalone kind of party game, I would say, is, is the the best uh, you know description of, of what it is. Um, much simpler. Obviously, it it uses the same kind of mechanics as as most card games do. Discard, you know, drawing. Um, you have a discard pile. You can bring back cards. You can look at your opponent's hand. Uh, we have a, a monster summoning uh, mechanic, which is, uh, but just you know, a single monster. So it's not not many many types of of monsters, and dealing damage and healing. So, you know, we we try to put as as many types of mechanics onto the cards as possible, uh, which turned out to be just sixteen. So, um, in a nutshell, you know, we're uh, we're we're looking at the the eight schools of magic found in in D and D. Um, so it's uh, you know abjuration, conjuration, illusion, enchantment, evocation, uh, necromancy, transmutation. I'm not sure if I mentioned illusion already and divination. You know. Mm -hmm. So basically, each card has two different abilities that that you can use, and uh, so it makes it sixteen. And we wanted to basically create a very fast pace, so a very short game that can play that can be played, you know, in just maybe five minutes or so, or you know, of course, depending on the number of players. But when we were play testing, even with four players, it was it was relatively fast. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and and you know to still have many many types of outcomes and strategies that you can use. So there are yeah. card combos, obviously, you know, discarding cards and then drawing them back, looking at your opponent's hand, and you know, having you know playing those cards that that you know that that will go through. Um, actually, Spell Wars was a part of. Torrents of the spell mm -hmm. order as a, as a stretch goal uh, that we didn't reach, but you know we had so much fun fun playing and play testing the game that that we decided to have a kind of mini project. So you know obviously if, if you look at the spell wars Kickstarter page, it's it's much simpler. You know we have two reward tiers only, so basically the deck and then we have a party set with some extra goodies like a 
you know some, some dice for for hit point counters for the game and you know a sticker sheet with uh, with eight different designs uh, that will be on it for the eight different schools kind of a retro style stickers um, and then the elder brain pin which just arrived um, actually to our office mm-hmm. so um, so we, we wanted to keep it very simple very you know very straightforward and and uh, and relatively you know uh, like in a just it, it's its own kind of standalone uh, package mm-hmm now, with that with that in mind, when you sit when, given the fact that this is that this is meant to you, know, it's meant to have a have a um, reduce your opponent's health to zero. Obviously, you're pro- you're probably not starting with the same amount of life as say magic, the which has that rule of twenty. Are you? Is it a case where characters are going to have ten hit points at the start of every match? Uh, no, much, much. We we were actually testing it with uh, with three. So if it's two players, then then just three hit points. And you know, for example, a vocation card deals one damage. So and and if you summon a monster and can attack uh, successfully, then that deals a damage. Mm-hmm. You have two actions around. So even if if in a single round you can do two damage, so basically the game can be over in just you know two three rounds. So um, that's what I mean by super fast. Yep. Um, we we were playing around with it. So obviously, if you have more players, then then uh, we would recommend the number of players as as the hit points. But uh, but uh, we will we'll have some recommendations for like homebrews how to change the game. You mm-hmm. know, change it up a little bit if if we want to have more. You know, uh, try different uh, strategies or tactics. Um, increasing the the hit points obviously will create a longer game, uh, which might be more enjoyable for some people. Mm-hmm. As as are, for example, restrictions on number of actions you can take. So even that can be increased if you want, um, or you know the. The number of cards you draw each turn, as well. Mm-hmm. And I did, I did notice there's a bit of a rule of two when it comes to the when it comes to several parts of the of the phases. The mm-hmm. first one I wanted to ask on is, you can play up to two cards during your turn, only during only during the spellcasting phase. But abjurations don't abjurations don't count and can be played at any time. What mm-hmm. were was the when it comes to the whole two cards and the abjuration thing, were those things to built to address um, issues that you guys found in playtesting? Yeah. So basically, abjuration card we wanted to include some kind of counterspell option, um, which is a, obviously an interrupt type of effect. Um, you know, interrupting someone else's uh, phase or someone else's spellcasting phase. So that's why we included abjuration as as a kind of uh, you know jolly joker or kind of uh, you know uh, 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 an exception to the rule. Mm-hmm. Um, but illusion cards, just to you know add a level of of complexity to it, uh, illusion cards can can play any type of card. So illusion can can be used to recreate the effect of a card, but we found it a little bit too powerful if it could also be used as an abjuration card as an interrupt. So that that's the, that that's why you know abjuration would not count towards the limit on someone else's turn, and the illusion cards. That's why it can't be used as an abjuration card mm-hmm. in other people's turns. And. I'm guessing. I'm guessing the rule of two when it comes to the cards that someone can play in their turn is to is to make sure that pe- that um people can set up combos easily. Yeah, of course. I mean that that's 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 basically why it's 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 the two cards. Uh, we tried with, of course, more. You know, just we tried with one. We tried with three. Um, uh, two 
came out to be the the optimal. Um, we also started playing with you know just drawing one card at the end of the turn, but uh, we found that that people you know we went through our cards very quickly. So even in the first you know if if you have two abjurations, you stop two two of your opponent's cards. You play two cards and you have basically two cards in your hand. You know so the drawing one card didn't work. So this rule of you know two uh, goes through as uh, you know uh, you noticed. Uh, through the entire game, it's it's uh, it's the same for actions and for for drawing as well. Mm -hmm. Now, with the, I'm and I'm guessing that's also the reason why, unless I'm mistaken, each card has two effects that you that you can use. Yes, that's also true. Yeah. Oh. And you pick one or the other, of course. Now. I don't see now. Um, one of them, uh, one of them is conjuration, which has the which has the effect of, um, some of summoning. Mm -hmm. And this is already this is already this is already kind of answered. But um, what were there were there thoughts at one at one point during design of ha of having a of having a monster token? Or was it always going to be the conjuration card act as, acts as the quote unquote monster? Uh, yeah, we were of course thinking about tokens. Um, we decided not to not to include them. Um, it, this might actually change, you know, because uh, we've been we've been testing it a lot, and especially for the unsummon ability. For, I mean, summoning, obviously, you play the card and you put the Conjuration card down on the table as the monster, you know? So we wanted to, again, simplicity was the was the guiding kind of, you know, rule for the, for game creation or game design here. Um, so that that's why we left the token out, because the Conjuration card itself can be used as a token. Um, it makes you know the on summon ability. So basically, returning the conjuration card to the you know card's original owner um, makes it a bit more complicated. Uh, and it's not a token effect, but you ha you can you have to keep track of of whose card it was originally, which makes it a little bit more pro problematic because of enchantment. So you can enchant other people's monsters but if it's unsummoned then it goes back to the owner's hand you know so we're we're still kind of testing that that uh, mechanic out a little bit um and we have a couple of options uh for it that we're thinking about either changing the unsummon rule a little bit so that it goes into the hand of the player who actually has the the monster mm -hmm. you know so if someone Enchants it, then it goes back to the enchanter's hand, and not the original owner. So that that would be one, of course, way around that. Uh, but we're still kind of fine tuning uh, the unsummon effect. But mm -hmm. you know, to answer your question about the tokens, it's it's pretty much unnecessary in this case because you can use the card. Yeah. Now, in now um. In some ca in some games, when the deck runs out, the game the game's over. Is this one of those cases, or is it a case of you take the discard pile and that's the deck now? Yep, yeah, uh, the the latter. So if if uh, the discard becomes the draw pile, and, uh, mm -hmm. if 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 cards run out, uh, which has never happened mm -hmm. during playtesting, so yeah. <laughs> was... highly highly unlikely. Was there and was there any instance during playtesting where a of where um a certain combo was unintentionally more powerful than you, than was planned and had had to be uh, and had to be adjusted yeah so uh sure um we've adjusted uh abjuration uh turned out a little bit too strong so um you know the especially because of the discard effect or the you know counter spell effect and uh and that you can use it as an interrupt. Mm -hmm. So the so the four shield effect, um, you know, we we just kind of uh, we we nerfed it a bit, and that's why it can only 
you know, negate a single attack of a summon monster. So it doesn't kill it. You just, you know, you can you can get you can basically protect against one hit point damage um, and a single evocation damage, which does damage to everybody, you know. But you can mm-hmm. you can negate just one. Um, we've actually increased, for example, necromancy um, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, that you can gain one hit point. It used to be gain one hit point up to your maximum. So you couldn't go above three or four or whatever the maximum hit points is. We changed it that you can go above it. Um, because, for example, if you have, let's say, two necromancies in your first round, you can play both. And then immediately you have five hit points, for example, if it's two players. Yeah. You know? So yeah, uh, we had to fine tune a lot. So you know, each 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 card, each ability, we we did like a strength uh, Excel sheet, you know, matrix to to gauge the 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 power of a of a single card, and you know how they're used in combos as well. So uh, mm-hmm. we <laughs> we spent about maybe an hour. You know, almost every day uh, playing Mage Wars, um, and well, not right now because we're riding the Torrents adventure. But uh, but uh, we try to spend as much time, you know, play testing it and and uh, and changing it up. And it's it's still a work in progress. So mm-hmm. um, and actually, now that you mention it, or now that we're at this point, uh, I would really invite everyone to our Discord page and there's a Spell Wars channel where you can actually play test it, you know? So mm-hmm. we invite everyone to to lend their thoughts to the to the Elder Brain and and uh, and and we're open to suggestions, of course. Mm-hmm. Um now I was I was going to ask if, I was going to ask if any situation happened where so, where somebody got OTK'd, but because of how you're you're never doing more than one da- one damage. It'd be more or less impossible to do that. Uh, what I will ask instead is: during playtesting, were there any um, any cards you had noticed weren't getting used as much, or was that not something that was significantly seen? Uh, yeah, we did notice. So transmutation kind of uh, stuck out a little bit. Um, and, and so we, we made a little bit more powerful. Um, it used to be the rule of two. So it used to be discarding two cards and, uh, and we changed that to three. And then it used to be that you can only draw the same number of cards that were discarded, but, but now it became that you can, you can draw the, the number plus an additional one. Mm Mm-hmm. And and it turns out that we use it more now. Of course, that you know this transfuse effect that that it became uh, much more powerful because of that. Yeah. Now, when it comes to the when it comes to the stretch goals, one that one that I find interesting that you guys got at 15k was um unique was unique card designs. Yes. So we're this- so happy. We're so happy about that. That 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 was our main main goal does that mean that every that every card is going to have unique art or <coughs> or a unique art for each of the spelt for each of the spheres no unique card for all 64 cards so we have eight now you know one for each mm-hmm. um and it's going to be 64 unique designs so all right i can then... i can certainly get that so we we were super excited about that. That that's basically the 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 modest goal we had we had in mind. Mm-hmm. Of course, they're gonna look crazy cool with the with the metallic ink, you know, foil. Mm-hmm. So it's gonna be foil cards, all of them, with sixty four additional, you know, sixty four original designs for each, and the box itself is gonna be an up, upgrade to the just a simple box. It's gonna be embossed you know so kind of 3d effect and also using metallic ink for that so it's going to be a beauty mm-hmm. and then well I, I mentioned to you 
you know, uh, <laughs> when we chatted that the the last stretch goal that we're actually looking at, the the one, the final one, is mm -hmm. uh, is the mobile app. Um, <clears throat> our our day job is, uh, and actually, I'm not sure if if you know this or or anyone else that that we're actually game developers. So we we make computer games in during our day jobs mm -hmm. or half the time. And uh, so we do have a lot of experience making uh, apps and, and, you know, both for mobile and PC and uh, all kinds of platforms. Uh, we, we have worked on a card game in the past, so we have a, a game engine that, uh, that we can probably use on the game server side. So it's, it's not going to be that much harder, you know, mm -hmm. because we just need to configure it. But obviously, yeah. interface and you know, it's a it's a complicated task. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but uh, but uh, or and actually, this is Elderbrain in general. You know, each Kickstarter project that we we do, we do want to include some kind of mobile app. For Crown of the Old Baker, we did a, a sound app, a soundscape app. You know, so you have dynamic sounds for encounters and, and just and like an ambient ambient sounds. Mm -hmm. And for for Torrents of the Spell Hoarder, it was the you know uh, Spell Wars mobile app. Um, knock on wood, I really hope we reach it. We still have eleven days and usually the you know last three days of the campaign is is pretty strong. Um, mm -hmm. so we'll see how we'll see how it goes. There's there's still a chance. Um, and I invite everyone who who pledged to you know maybe upgrade their their tier to the party set. Um, communicated, of course, but uh, but uh, we hope we can make it because yeah. it's, it's it would be cool. It would be a free app, um, so uh, that that's also a, a kind of major selling point. And we we might monetize it with some skins or you know some kind of extra. Thing, but the game itself will be free. Mm -hmm. And uh, and sorry, in, in, important point that uh, as you know, as I mentioned, that Spell Wars was a part of Torrents of the Spell Order. The game or or the idea of the game will be included in the adventure itself. Now that Spell Wars has been funded, so players in Torrents of the Spell Order in the adventure itself will be able to. You know, play the game, and and we'll have NPCs who are Spell Wars champions, and and uh, you know, it will be featured as a kind of meta game in the adventure itself. Yeah, which is, which is pretty cool. And with now with that in mind, I did want to ask if you if you guys had if you guys had considered um, doing a version in in some sort of. Um, some sort of some sort of virtual ta some sort of virtual ta tabletop like say tabletopia or the or um tabletop simulator sometime down the road cuz obviously the the app is nice but um the only way the the only way for somebody like me to to use the app is if I was using an emulator like BlueStacks not mm -hmm. that I don't have a cell phone it's just it's just <laughs> that it just that um I don't really use that. I can't really use that particular cell phone for any sort of gaming. Mm -hmm. No, I understand the uh, great question. Um, it, uh, probably in in the adventure, it you know it, it's it's not going going to be a multiplayer game because you know either if if you're not playing you know live with with your friends at a table, then mm -hmm. then it makes it problematic. Um, so probably it's just going to be some skill checks or something like that, you know, playing mm -hmm. or in intelligence checks or like we usually do. Um, uh, I would have to look into it. That's 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 uh, that that would be my short answer. You know, we would need to see if we can take the code and somehow you know morph it onto a, a VTT. Mm -hmm. um, I would say it's pretty hard um, offhand, you know. Um, don't know, so mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I I wouldn't rule it out, um, but it seems difficult. 
for some for something like t I'd s tabletop yeah I can't I can't say on the I can't say on it because it doesn't have much of a modding scene but mm -hmm. um people make people make and people make and put out their their own one man operation board game board and card games all the time on tabletop simulators on um, Steam Workshop so may so maybe there's the possibility there and I know some people use um TTS for um play testing Mm -hmm. So, not saying not saying it would be a perfect fit, but um, it's some it's something to consider. Mm -hmm. No, definitely we we have actually been approached uh, already. You know, uh, can can name the company, but uh, but uh, it, you know the the thought has come up or the idea, um, but. We'll, we'll, we would first need to, of course, develop the game and then see if uh, if it made sense. And actually, we might not even be the ones, you know, porting it. Maybe another company would. Mm -hmm. um, so that's also a, a kind of an opportunity or or something that's that's still open, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. But good idea. I mean, it 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 would be a lot of fun to to play the game. During an adventure, actually, you know, actually live and and on a VTT for sure. Yeah. Now, what are you shooting for as far as the release window for Spell Wars? It's it would definitely be uh, actually shipped out or produced and shipped out uh, simultaneous to Torrens. So, mm -hmm. so that's the plan. Actually, anyone who's backed uh, Torrens would also receive Spell Wars in in the same package. So we would add the you know the, the deck of cards to their existing pledge mm -hmm. for Torrens, and we'll have a refund policy for the extra shipping, uh, which we're collecting now. So mm -hmm. if you know, so pe we want to avoid people paying double shipping for Torrens and for Spell Wars, so they'll be merged on Backer Kit, and uh, and uh, any kind of outstanding shipping fees will be returned. So that's our plan, and that's uh, late this year. Mm -hmm. so we're we're shooting for November, uh, hopefully by Christmas, or definitely by Christmas, I would say. Yeah, I can I can I can certainly get that, and this would be a perf this would be a perfect thing to kill time on during the during the Christmas parties. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, and it's a it's a party game. So I mean, you know, it's it's a it's a uh, just a small deck. You can keep it in your pocket, whip it out whenever, and and have a short game. Mm -hmm. uh, and we hope people will be playing it during uh, torrents as well. And I, I will cert I will certainly be looking forward to seeing how it develops. But with that, with that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come to come all the way to my my temple and enjoy the madness as always. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here. Drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> I can wholeheartedly agree with that. Mm -hmm. so and of, che cheers to <laughs> cheers to that, Mildred. Yep. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then. On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>